Welcome to Geo Up Over and Down Under. I'm Rose. And I'm Kat. And today we have Penny Hargraves uh, as our guest speaker. Penny spent her childhood in New Zealand, married to an Englishman, and then spent the next 24 years in the UK. Her ex-husband was an insurance broker at Lloyd's of London, where he was responsible for much of the world's airlines insurance. He set up the first space and satellite insurance programs, which involved many visits for both Penny and her husband at NASA flight and safety meetings. She was an organic farmer in the UK selling direct to restaurants and was well known in the horse world as she competed successfully in equestrian events in New Zealand, Australia and the UK. Penny purchased and sold New Zealand horses to well-known racehorse trainers there. She trained racehorses in both the UK and New Zealand and returned to her beloved home in 1992 to set up an international horse centre at the Ohuria Farm. It took Penny three years to find the perfect location. Penny had to leave her farm in 1996 due to a radio tower being erected on the neighbouring farm. The antennae focused power over her property and into the city of Christchurch. She left the farm due to the harm caused to both herself, people and animals on her property. For the last 15 years, Penny has been campaigning vigorously for safer emissions of communication towers and communicating with independent scientists worldwide for many years, including many concerned scientists in the US. Folks, there have been over... Well, today we looked and there were 7,594 aftershocks since the September the 4th, 2010 quake, which was initially reported as 30 kilo- 33 kilometres deep with a magnitude of 7.4. This data was quickly downgraded to 7.1 and at a depth of 10 kilometres deep. Penny, welcome to Geo Up Over and Down Under. You're speaking with Cat and Rose. Hello, Cat. Hello, Rose. Hello, hello. Penny, you've become known as the Erin Brockovich of uh, electromagnetic radiation in your ongoing efforts to lower exposure to electromagnetic radiation and to try and get government controls for safer sightings of cell towers uh, and warnings on cell phones. As we've said, you're very busy and successful. You were a very busy and successful racehorse trainer and farmer. So how did you get involved in this battle? Well, I got involved in it originally because of uh, us buying a farm that was next to a radio tower, which we were told was uh, only low-powered AM frequency, and we later discovered that they had put very high-powered FM frequencies onto it uh, without any consent. And we had um, we had absolutely no idea about this. I, I didn't know the, really the difference between AM and FM, and I wasn't particularly interested. I was interested in my farm, my land, my friends and being back in New Zealand and um, just in enjoying being back here. And um, then we had some very unusual things, deaths with our animals, which were so suspicious that the uh, vets couldn't actually understand what was going on and they called in the police and we had a police watch on us for six months um, because they thought somebody was actually deliberately harming the animals. Uh, We later found out that the symptoms they actually had were those that have been um, found near other radio towers all over the world. How did you find out what was the cause of the harms effect on your farm, Penny? Well, it was quite extraordinary really because the uh, police were called in 1994 and um, over the next two years... uh, It wasn't just the animals that were getting sick because I'd moved out to my farm by then um, and I got very sick. Um, My builders got very sick. Everybody got sick. And um, then we, um, an application was made by a a firm called Chapman Tripp, a legal firm, and they applied on behalf of Radio New Zealand to make the Aurora Tower into a designated site and apparently that meant no consents would then be required for past, present and future use of the Ruyata land. Um, The application sign was found hidden in a hedge by my neighbour, who's actually an electrician, and um, he advised me of this application, and he said that it could possibly be causing all the um, electromagnetic interference, all the interference we were getting on our 
on our radios, our TVs, our faxes. Nothing would work at all. We, it, it was unbelievable. We had radio coming down the telephone so loudly you couldn't even hear people talk. Uh, anyway, he um, got the National Radiation Laboratory, having discovered that they'd actually put very high powered FM frequency onto the radio tower without consent. He felt it could be causing a problem, so he got the National Radiation Laboratory to monitor at his property and the radio tower land, and the readings were so high they actually went off the meter. And so, of course, he... he um, went to the council and lodged a complaint with them, and um, that was the uh, next stage. So did the, did the council ask the operators to relocate the illegal FM stations? No, they didn't actually. Uh, we didn't actually know at that time that it was, was causing uh, people and animals health problems because what you can't see, taste, feel or smell, you don't really associate with animals falling over and not being able to get up and um, the terrible you know, the increased cardiac, you don't really associate it with something that you can't um, identify. Uh, the council asked the residents um, to um, inform them who had electrical equipment that was not performing properly. And um, some of the people had such bad inf interference, the radio would come down their television in the middle of the night and they couldn't turn it off. It would just be so loud they couldn't sleep. And metal chimneys more than two k's away from the radio tower would be actually um, blaring the radio station down. I've actually heard of a similar thing happening near the Vatican where um, all they got was uh, priestly chants all night coming down their TVs. So we were probably better than them. Jenny Shipley was Minister for Radio New Zealand when the Ohuria FM was sold when transmitting without consent as part of an $89 million package to the newly formed radio network. What did radio network and council do uh, when they were made aware of the recent purchase of Ohuria Tower and the emissions showed serious cluster illnesses affecting people and animals? Um, the, the, these... Uh, things were being reported only when the frequencies beam most powerfully. Well, it was very interesting because when we actually were investigating the electrical interference, we found that wherever there was electrical interference, there were also clusters of ill health, and they were only occurring where the RF radio frequency and electrical interference was. And so um, we, we had meetings with the council about this because we had all these clusters of, of very uh, sick people, um, and the council advised uh, the radio network to employ Mr. Gledhill of the National Radiation Laboratory uh, to monitor, but only at radio network selected sites. So what was the result of that monitoring? Well, the new monitoring that Mr. Gledhill had previously monitored such high readings that went off the meter, and uh, that was two months before, um, so he, he actually um, came back as new readings where he'd monitored at 12 different selected radio network selected sites, came back that the monitoring showed emissions were too low to ever cause harm and could never be the cause of the reported illnesses. Right, so Mr Gledhill had previously monitored uh, high readings and they went off Yes, the he had monitored very high readings there and... It was quite extraordinary because now he had, had not said that he'd done it incorrectly uh, two months before. August was his first readings. November was when he did the second lot of readings. And he then claimed um, that um, there, was no, there was no connection at all. Penny, did anyone else do any monitoring? Uh, yes. Um, there was a man called Dr. Cherry. It was quite extraordinary. He was actually our local environmental counsellor. And he'd just returned from overseas where he'd spent six months sabbatical, particularly in the US, looking at the effects, uh, the detrimental effects from, for um, inappropriately located cell phone towers and too high in emissions. And he knew how to monitor and he had monitoring equipment and he actually came out and monitored. And um, he actually told me at that time that the, uh, that the effects, cluster illnesses we, we were actually... Uh, experiencing were similar to those that had been found where researchers had looked at other radio towers. And um, he, he monitored very high readings and 60 minutes later monitored very high readings. But um, Mr. Gledhill from the National Radiation, he claimed they were using their equipment wrongly. And these were, the, it was his readings that were accepted and the others were ignored. Um, when we went to a commissioner hearing, 
um, uh, the, the, the commissioner actually agreed without any investigation to double the FM stations to four, which was quite extraordinary considering there were so many sick people. Mm. The radio network knew they had been sold a uh, pup by Radio New Zealand and knew about the clusters of sick people with symptoms similar to those uh, international researchers had found near other radio towers. Um, what did Radio Network do? Did they ask the government for compensation or a health investigation to ensure they were not uh, landed with uh, ongoing problems or future legal liability? Now, this was a quite extraordinary thing. Because the Radio New Zealand had only recently sold uh, the Ruria Radio Tower as part of an $89 million package to the newly formed Radio Network, um, you would have thought that when they found that um, there were the cluster of illnesses where the frequency focused, and it was a very unusual site for FM because FM is normally up on a hill and the Ruria Radio Tower site is um, close to the sea and the emissions are actually focused uphill. So you would have thought when the radio network found there was a problem, they would have immediately said to the government, you know, you pay for us to relocate somewhere else. We want some money back. Huh. Um, but that wasn't actually what happened. Um, we spent about four years battling to try and get the FM uh, removed. Um, but what we actually found later on was the radio network had said that they would actually um, make a thorough investigation and in 2006, we found service our investigation. They'd actually um, turned the radio power up, which meant the sick people got even sicker. Mm. How do you know that the Ohuria power was increased? Well, when we obtained the power records um, and in 2006, these showed that whenever they were doing monitoring, the power was turned down and stations were relocated, but in 1997, when um, we had actually presented the um, report of the cluster illnesses, the radio network increased the AM power. And the records also show that there's huge fluctuations in FM power at different times, and they show that the power can be increased and decreased at will, and transmission angles can be altered, so you get the um, side lobes are different to where they were before. So if they alter the angles a wee bit, the people who are really sick might get a bit better, but somebody else will get sicker further out, and this is the pattern of illnesses that was actually observed. Mm, this is